Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the studio. So tonight, obviously, we are going to paint this sea turtle. There's my drawing. I've got that. And here are my brushes. These are the silver black velvet brushes. My paints are, of course, my M. Graham paints that I've used many, many times on this channel. Let's get the paint cam going. There we go. I will try to leave the turtle in the upper right hand, I'm sorry, left hand corner so you can see it as I paint. I've got the number eight uh, black, silver black velvet brush. It is, of course, a round brush. Uh, part squirrel, part synthetic brush. There we go. Just putting on a very light layer of uh, gamboge or azo orange, a little mix of both. Uh, the paper that I am using today is Strathmore 500 series paper, 100% cotton paper, uh, pre-cut. And I'm just mixing in a little bit of color here, trying to get a basic underlayment, a basic color of the shell, maybe the lightest part of that shell. There we go, and blend that on down. I don't want a hard edge quite yet. A little bit of ochre here on this guy's head or this girl's head. I'm not sure which it is. I don't know how you tell which is a boy sea turtle and which is a girl sea turtle, but we're going to try not to worry about that too much. All right, mixing in a little bit of red here. Looked like that was probably just a bit of quinacridone rose to warm that color up just a little bit more. There we are. And again, I'm not trying to put this on too dark. A little bit of uh, raw umber there. I'm not trying to put it on too dark. I want a nice light layer. We're going to put a couple of layers on this painting. So. Uh, a, a nice light layer at the beginning is going to be just what we want. And just deciding where I want this flipper to be a bit darker and where I want to make sure it's lighter, where I have a transition from one color to another color. I'm just going to leave that be a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to get to all of this eventually just dropping in a little bit of color. I will admit to you that I actually painted this about a month ago, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm just seeing this video again for the first time. I've done a quick run through of it to see what I need to talk about, uh, but it is a bit difficult, I will admit, after not having seen this for so long. That's a little bit of uh, cobalt blue on the bottom of his chin there and I'm going to be mixing in a bit of phthalo blue there and a little bit of phthalo green probably on some of his flippers just to add some variety of colors. It gives it that nice iridescent glow like you can see on the picture uh, on our reference picture and the same thing on his or her belly down here. And again, I'm just dropping in some color. I don't want to make this really strong. I want to keep this fairly light. This is a first layer for us. And as it's our first layer, we're going to block in some color, make sure we've got it where we want it, make sure it's starting to look where, how we want it, and then we can start to darken everything up. All right. Now, now that I've got the basic colors, the basic shapes in here like I want. I think we can go ahead and start adding a bit more to this. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just trying to match this color on the shell. If you look at the reference photo, there's a quite a bit of yellow and then it goes into a bit of red and then a bit of uh, a brownish reddish color. And so I want to try to duplicate that. I'm not trying to recreate it, but I'm trying to represent that by just letting all those paints mix on the turtle itself. There we go. I'm not worrying about 
the lines on the shell at this point. We'll get to those, or we'll look at those. Maybe we need them, maybe we don't later on. But you can see the beautiful modeled uh, colors that we get by letting the paints do their thing on the page instead of on the palette. Now I'm just painting in a little bit of this brown. There's a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt umber in here mixed together. And that's the skin just underneath the shell. It's got this nice yellowish kind of color, ochre-y color. So I'm just going to drop that on there. And because we put that blue underneath and we're going to uh, blend the edges out a little bit, uh, you're going to see it's going to match in there real nicely and be seamless. And there we go. And I'm not trying to paint everything in there. I'm not over trying to overdo it with this. I just want to get the indications of some of this. And now I'm going to continue right on down that front flipper. I'm going to put in a few of those spots, those nice beautiful brown spots on that flipper, but not too many. I'm going to basically uh, fill this whole thing in with some under, another under color, another layer of color, kind of like we're glazing on top of that. There we go. And you can see that uh, I didn't fully mix the color on my brush or on the palette. I'm letting some of it run together on that flipper itself so we get a bit of uh, mixing on the paper. And just darker as I get down to the end of that to try to duplicate what we see on the reference photo again. All right, a little bit more of this burnt umber. And we're going to draw some spots on this guy's face. There we go. He's got a nice pale skin underneath that, these spots, so I don't want to take away from that by putting another layer on here. Uh, and because I'm putting them on just one layer of wash, it's really going to be bright and shine through. And you'll see that uh, in the end, they, those spots really stand out for us. I should say that if there is a bit of an echo on this video, uh, I know there have been a bit of echo on a few videos in the past. I am doing it in a large room and it's kind of unavoidable at the moment. I wanted to get this video out before it was too late. Uh, so it's kind of what I had to do. Okay, just continuing along with what I did on this guy's head. He's got some spots and dots and color along with that, that blue on his underbelly or on her underbelly down there. And here I'm mixing a little bit of thalo green with a little bit of thalo blue and cobalt blue to try and darken up that underbelly. Our reference photo really has this bright, vivid colors on it. And I want to try to duplicate that. And a second layer of paint here is really going to help with that. It looks really dark on the painting, but it's going to dry quite a bit lighter. We may even have to come back and darken that up another time, but that'll just be another layer, add a little bit, a bit of, uh, or leave a bit of translucence in there, but still look really nice for us. And we're gonna be able to adjust that as we want, as we go along. All right, now that left front flipper, way at the end, does get a bit dark. So we're gonna put that on just however I think it needs to be and work that way, work it up and blend that out. And this one, we're definitely going to be coming back and darkening up a bit more. All right, thalo blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of thalo green in there. And those thalos are really good for adding some iridescence, some really bright pop that I think the seawater uh, gave to this turtle. There we go. We're just going to drop that in and blend that edge out. You could leave it as a hard edge if you wanted to, but that flipper is nice and rounded, and I think it would have a very 
rounded, soft edge to it. So I'm going to do that too. There we go. You can already tell that it looks like that flipper has quite a bit of depth to it just by doing that little bit of blending out. And just darkening it up. But again, it's going to dry lighter. It looks super dark right now, but it's going to dry quite a bit lighter. We're going to be happy with that in the end. Okay, now I'm going to put a bit of shadow underneath the back of the shell, right on top of that flipper. There it is. We're just continuing to add a little bit of depth here and a little bit of depth there. It does look like that shell stands apart from that flipper at this point. As soon as you drop that shadow in there, you start adding depth onto everything. All right, a little bit more blue in here. A little bit of turquoise, I will admit, along with that phthalo blue underneath that chin. And the turquoise is a nice bright blue too. Really help that pop and stand out. And as I was looking at this picture, it seemed as though the blue color under this turtle's chin was a little different than the color uh, even on the flippers, but definitely on its underbelly. The underbelly and, and somewhat on the flippers really was a bit more green. Maybe that's because it has to, the, the camera had to take a picture through that water just a bit more. But the color on the bottom of this turtle's chin uh, really did seem a bit bluer. And so that's why I mixed in that little bit of turquoise there. Uh, the finished product does show a bit of difference between the two colors. And I'm okay with that based upon our reference photo. All right, now just dropping in a little eye. That's basically just a little bit of Payne's gray there. And as soon as you put the eye in on all of these animals, we've got an eye in there. Now you've got a face and a personality. <clears throat> all right, here we go. I've got a nice underpainting under what I'm putting on right now and I don't want to ruin that so just a nice light coat of paint here inside the plates on this turtle's shell and where we're going to leave some light are those junctures those sutures in between the plates I do have it drawn on it's very light uh, <clears throat> it's I, I, I'm sorry it's very light and I'm just painting up to that line for each of these pla plates and I'm trying to replicate the colors that are underneath in fact I put this on very light you can kind of see the pattern of paint underneath the plate that I've just painted so there's nice uh, transparency on this but where it's more yellow I want to leave it a bit more yellow where it's a bit browner I want to put a little bit more brown in there or umber in there where it's a bit more red, I'm going to put in a little bit of that um, pyrol red or um, alizarin crimson just to, just to add a little bit of color, but not too much to change what's underneath there. And there we go. Now you can see the wonderful suture or junction between those two plates where I've just painted almost to touch each of the two of them, but still allowing that the luminosity of that, the transparency of the watercolors. I do apologize for having to turn the page over and over and over again. I used to hate to have to turn the, the paper while I was painting in a video. And I used to try to kill myself not to do that. And then I realized Boy, I'm not doing the painting or myself any justice by, uh, by not turning it. If you sit down to paint at home, you're probably going to turn the paper when you need to. Every, we all have a favorite way to paint. I'm obviously right-handed, and to, to get at some of these, from these shapes from the right-hand side, I need to turn it a little bit. So while I do apologize for having to turn the paper ever so slightly, ever so slightly, well, a whole lot, but for having to turn the paper, um, it is a necessary evil, 
and uh, in the end it makes for a better painting. So here we go, finishing up the plates on the top of the shell. And I think it's coming out fantastic. Really happy with it, really, really happy with it. There we go, look at that. Looks great. And <laughs> if I could keep the reference photo in the frame, you'd be able to see what I'm talking about. All right, let me mix up a little bit of neutral tint here, along with some of this burnt umber, just to make a nice dark, and I can really start to put in some of the patterning on this front flipper. I don't want to duplicate the front flipper. I don't want to duplicate any of these dots from my reference photo. That reference photo is inspiration. I want to take from that and do, do what I want to do with it. So I'm only using it as a reference, using it as a bit of inspiration, and I'll go from there. I'll take it from there and do it on my own. You can see the reference photo has lots and lots of these dots, and I'm putting in a few of them, but not nearly as many. Same thing I did with uh, this guy's head. Uh, there's a lot more I could have done. I could have gone closer to the, to the lines, but I think what I've got is pretty good couple of dots on the neck and and when you look at this photo you're not going to look at it and or I'm sorry when you look at this painting you're not going to look at it and go oh I can't believe he didn't paint all of the spots on this turtle's flippers uh, you're going to look at it and go that's great your, your mind is going to say there's dots on those flippers just like uh, in real life and you'll be done that's it so there's no need to paint every one of those all right, I'm darkening up the shadow underneath the shell. There we go. It's going to push that foot back a little bit, or that flipper back, and pull that shell forward just a bit. And if there's a bit of shadow on that flipper, there's probably a bit of shadow on the turtle's underbelly. There we go. Perfect. Now it's darker and looks better. All right. A little phthalo blue, a little phthalo green. Let me get in here. I don't want to make this too dark by that flipper. I don't want to put dark next to dark. I do want dark next to light. So even though the turtle's belly or, or chest there is, is dark, because I've painted the flipper dark, I got to have some break between them. So the blue pushes it back a little bit. I'm going to leave it with that instead of trying to make it any darker than it is. All right, a little bit more, a little bit of sepia in here, a little bit of umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson, just making, again, some dark colors to put on this guy's flipper. And a few dots here and there, not being too particular about where they go. I just know that there need to be a few of them on there. We are getting there. It's looking great, actually. There is a little bit of color yet to go on the rim of the shell. So I just want to drop a little bit of that on. It's pretty light back where we're at right now. And again, I'm just painting up to the line that I had previously drawn. So I'll leave just a tiny gap between what I previously painted and what I'm currently painting, just to leave a tiny little line. It's going to make it look, look a little realistic, but not certainly I don't do anything that's photorealistic, and you'll get the image of it in your mind, even though it won't be a photorealistic image. There we go, and I'm just going to continue with those colors. A little alizarin crimson, a little burnt umber. Till I get it close to where I think it needs to be, 
And I'm just going to drop that color on. And yes, I'm still busily turning my paper. <laughs> there it is. And, and I should say I've dropped down. I believe this is the number four uh, silver black velvet brush of my rounds that I have. These are the only four silver black velvet brushes that I have. These are pretty popular these days. So I got them and tried them out. They are nice brushes. I don't know that they're my favorite brush of all the brushes that I have, but they are nice brushes. And just continuing with what I'm doing. I want to yell at myself, come on, Michael, hurry up. You can do it. But I know it takes a little bit of time to get it done. We're almost there. I promise you, if you've hung in this long, hang in just a little bit longer. We've got just a short ways to go, and you'll see the finish of this one. And again, as I move forward in this, and I'm seeing this on the my reference photo, it looks like the colors are getting a little bit darker, kind of matches uh, the intensity of the color on the top of the shell. Maybe not exactly, but fairly close anyways. A couple of more of these little squares, rectangles, and I think that's going to do it for us. One more, two more. What do I have? I think I've got two more. Anyways, we're getting close to the end. If you like this video, and I, and I hope you like this video, give a like to it down below. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done that. Uh, if you are able to, join me on Saturday nights pretty regularly. I've been doing a Friday night, 8 o'clock Pacific time. I do a live stream from my studio. I love when people stop by, ask any questions you like. Uh, just get in the chat, talk to other people wanting to watercolor, learn to watercolor. It's a fun place. I really enjoy it. One of my favorite things to do. Uh, and this is about it. Just darkening up, looking and checking the values is really what I'm doing right now making sure that the values are exactly the way I want them. Not quite right here. So I'm going to just darken up these spots a little bit. I'll draw a little bit around that eye, make it stand out just a bit more. And there we go. I'd be remiss if I didn't say you could follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. I believe the links are down below. Um, I'm pretty active on Twitter and Instagram. I post there several times a week, usually more than you're gonna see here. And I think that's about it. Thank you for stopping by the studio. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're able to stop back and see me again sometime. Until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.